you say that was that was excellent so you say you're not an entrepreneur but you're entrepreneur empowering and enabling other entrepreneurs that sounds like an entrepreneur to me <laughs> i don't think anybody would disagree with that entrepreneur squared uh, good evening everybody welcome to tonight's webinar organized by the asia institute of mentoring aim aim is a non-profit organization with a mission to elevate mentoring to the forefront here in Asia to raise the quality of mentors and set the standard in mentoring, bringing the benefits of mentoring to all facets of the society to potentially impact millions of lives. I also want to share with you uh, from, from my experience, we had three years of incubation in incubating 28 startups so to help you understand how you can actually chart your path in, as an entrepreneur in the uh, sustainability scene. I myself, I wouldn't call myself an entrepreneur per se in the sustainability scene because I am really looking at how I can enable entrepreneurs and how I can really make the ecosystem a much better place and more effective place for entrepreneurs to succeed, especially in sustainability solutions. So that is the work I've been doing, just like a brain teaser for you. You are an astro astronaut and you're part of the International Space Station. So imagine you're actually in space and suddenly one of your spaceship, the distributor broke down and you're trying to figure out how do you repair it. When you analyze the problem, you see that, hey, there's actually some metal shavings that has that are built up around the, the bolts of the old unit. You, you're trying to find ways to remove it. What was actually used in this situation was uh, a toothbrush. As uh, surprising as it was, a lot of times when you think about problems, you know, it can be complex and it can actually be very daunting. I, I've mentioned that this is a real life example. Sometimes the solution that is implemented is very simple. We have to find solutions that actually fit the problem that we're trying to solve instead of finding complex and fancy solutions which might or might not address the problem. When it comes to entrepreneurship, it's not so much about having fancy code or fancy websites or fancy solutions, but really what is the problem that you're trying to address. And if there is something simple that you can do to solve the problem, then just, just do it. The first thing we have to really understand is, do we understand the problem and do we understand what is actually the, the main cause, the root cause of the issue that we're trying to solve. And if we can effectively address that, uh, regardless of how simple or complex the solution is, I think usually the simpler solutions work better because people find it easier to understand, to adopt, and to actually get behind. I think the question is, how do you start? Unless you have already made up your mind to get into entrepreneurship and to start a startup, it is quite a daunting task. You have to choose the right area that you are passionate about. Don't go into something just because you think that, hey, like, this looks like there will be a lot of money in it, yes, but it might not sustain you after a few years because especially in the sustainability startup scene, it's quite hard to get off the ground and start running. The resources and the networks, the ecosystem is still building. So it might not be as easy or not be as straightforward as compared to others. I, I feel like the SDG, this is a good framework for someone who is just starting out to look into. In each of these, there are different targets. It's literally the world leaders and this global organization that has come together and said, hey, these are the biggest problems that we need to solve. So after you have chosen which area you want to work in, I think most important is for you to really understand the problem that you want to solve. And this can come in a few ways. Of course, research is one, but I feel what's more effective is to really be on the ground to observe how people or how things are being done. So, as I said, not necessarily you're trying to solve someone's problem, right? It might be a non-living thing, right? It can be temple waste. Observe how the temple waste is, what process is being used, how it's being discarded, whether there's actually waste or if actually the temple waste is being used again. The only way to really understand it is to be on the ground, to see how it's happening and to empathize with whoever is facing the issue. Attending events on the topic as well as uh, talking to those experiencing the problem and talking to others working on the problem are also very important. Especially talking to those experiencing the problem, that's your user interviews, right? If you are trying to solve a problem for a community, that's something that you can do which will be really effective to motivate you and the team to actually go in the right direction. You don't want to be solving problems that people might not be facing. Or Actually talking to others working in the space can be very valuable. Why? Because you can understand what problems they have faced or what hurdles they have faced in trying to solve the issues. And you can also learn from it and you also can see you know, roughly where the interest in the and the support system in that specific sector is. As the founder, while it is true that you might not be the, the main person doing the technical stuff, you still need to have some sort of understanding. So you do spend a bit of time if you feel that, hey, I'm really passionate about this problem. I've spoken to people. I do want to solve this problem. I understand it. Try to have a broad overview of what skills is needed to solve the problem so that even when you form the team, 
you can better address the problem as a team. Actually working on it, right? It can be overwhelming sometimes. What is really important is to keep yourself centered with a community. This can be your team. This can be a group of like-minded people who feel a passion about a particular topic. This also can be your friends who, who can understand what you do and why you're doing it. Basically, surround yourself with people who are there to support you so that you can keep this journey going. Because entrepreneurship, sometimes it's a very, very lonely journey. Basically, every startup is unique. The founder feels like they experience a certain kind of issues. But what is actually happening is a lot of the entrepreneurs and a lot of founders experience the same things. It's just that when they come together, then they realize how universal some of the experiences are. When I speak to founders as well, that's one thing that keeps coming up, which is they need a support ecosystem. That is why we've actually moved from running incubation programs to building a digital platform online, a web platform called app.interseed.co. You can actually see the ecosystem in Southeast Asia, who are the different players and who is working on what. There are also some people who are just interested in sustainability and we are forming that ecosystem for you to potentially thrive in and make your life a bit easier. But we also have uh, funding opportunities and uh, knowledge resources as well as eventually we'll be launching a volunteering portal inside as well. The people in this community, they do care about sustainability, so it's more targeted. Your reach will be more targeted and you can be more confident that the skill sets they are looking for might be in this community.